Good morning, Pine Ridge. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, to start with today, I want to I wanna start by talking about parades. Now, I don't know about you, I'm not a fan of parades. Now, the Rap Toronto Raptors had a parade last summer, and I probably would have been into going to that one. But in general, uh, Santa Claus parade or any other kind of parade, not really my kind of thing. I heard a comedian talk about parades, and he said, you know, if you don't like a parade, just walk the opposite direction. It's like watching it on fast forward. And uh, I might do that for the next Santa Claus parade, but um, I was trying to think if I've ever been in a parade. And I think I might have been when I was in grade school, you know, playing the trumpet for, for a parade. But the one that actually stuck out in my mind the most, uh, it's a very vague memory, but, but, it, but it is a memory I have when I was a little kid, where it must have been part of a, a VBS like a, or a backyard club or something like that. I, I, I had this distinct memory I don't remember the, the details around it, but I had this distinct memory of, of walking around a neighborhood in a little parade. And really what it was is, you know, we, had, we learned a song and then we built instruments. So you can imagine how amazing this parade must have been. Uh, I think it was one of those things where you take a couple of plates and you glue them together with beads inside and, and, and you know, you walk around and we bang it. And, and I don't remember what the song was. All I, I had this memory of walking around the neighborhood and at the time, you know, thinking, hey, this is pretty cool. You know, I'm, I'm in a parade. Uh, looking back, I gotta imagine it was a pretty pathetic parade. Uh, there was no one watching. So really, we were just a bunch of kids on a noisy walk, you know, singing, singing some song, banging on some homemade tambourine. Um, not, not the greatest parade, I'm sure. Uh, the reason I'm talking about parades is today is Palm Sunday. And uh, we're going we're gonna to read about a different kind of parade, uh, a much more significant one. Uh, in fact, the reason I say it's significant is that all four of the Gospels, the people who, you know, the, the writers who were taking an account of Jesus' life, all four of them talk about this parade that he was in. Uh, something called the Triumphal Entry it takes, takes place on Palm Sunday. Keep in mind, only two of the Gospels talk about his birth. And so that tells us that this, this was a pretty significant, significant event. And so since all four of the Gospels talk about it, what I've done is I've, I've gone through and I've just taken parts of all of it to tell the, the story as a whole. So if you're trying to follow along, it, it's going to be tough. So, I mean, you can follow along with any, any book you want, um, if you can find the triumphal entry in there. But uh, this, is, this is basically something I've patched together out of all the Gospels. So the story goes like this. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into that village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, just say the Lord needs them and will return them soon, and he will immediately let you take them. Now, we don't know for sure how how this all went down. We don't know if Jesus spoke to somebody behind the scenes and arranged for this to happen, or if this was just a case of, of Jesus being, being God and omniscient and he, he knew that there was a donkey there. Um, we don't really know, and it, and it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is, uh, Jesus says, you know, if, if he asks you about it, tell him the Lord needs them, he'll return them soon, and immediately he will let you take them. And the reason is, is that the the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Everything belongs to Jesus. Jesus created everything out of nothing. And so that donkey belongs to him. And so I've talked before about this, not really you know, thinking too much about it and saying that basically Jesus sends his disciples to, to go steal a donkey. But that's not really what's going on here. Jesus is using something that belongs to him for his own purpose. Now, the other thing that's interesting here is that he says, um, the Lord needs it which is a, a, an interesting concept, this idea that Jesus needs anything. First of all, Jesus walked everywhere. Every time you see him, Jesus is walking. And so are you telling me that Jesus couldn't make the walk from, from where he was into Jerusalem? It, it's not that far a walk. Well, if we continue reading, we find out why it is that Jesus needed this donkey. Verse 4, well, verse 4 in, in the chapter I'm looking at, says, This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. And so the reason that Jesus needed this donkey 
was he needed to send a message. He needed to let everyone know that he was the king and he was coming to town. Uh, this, this was his coming out party. This, this was his uh, coronation, if you will. And so Jesus needed to send, a, to send a signal to everyone. His disciples didn't understand at the time, but this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. How often do you see things after the fact? You know, how often do you go through life and realize only after the fact how significant something is? Well, that's, that's what happened with these, uh, these disciples. We'll continue on. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. Of course they did. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and they threw their garments over the colt and he sat on it. The news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. The uh, Bible tells us that people were talking about his miracles, the things that were happening in, in, in Jesus', Jesus ministry including one of the things that happened right before he came to town, which was the resurrection of Lazarus. And so people are getting really excited about Jesus. I mean, they're, they're, under, they're beginning to understand who he is, and they're, they're getting excited that he is on his way to Jerusalem. A large crowd of Passover visitors went down the road to meet him. As he rode along, the crowds spread their garments on the road ahead of him. And others cut palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road. This idea of spreading the garments on the road, you know, today we might say they were rolling out the red carpet. Um, this idea of a red carpet is, is relatively new in our history. Uh, but when you, when you think about royalty or, or, you know, people who we think are important or maybe up until recently thought were important, um, like, like actors and actresses going into the, uh, the Academy Awards, um, that's, that's where you often see things like the red carpet. But we, we roll out the red carpet today to signify that someone is important. And they were doing the same thing there. They were spreading their garments on the road. Understand what this would have been like for them. I mean, for you and I to throw something on the ground, a, a piece of clothing is not that big a deal. I mean, you could pick up a, a new shirt or a pair of jeans or a, a coat at Value Village for relatively little. For them to be throwing their garments on the ground was huge. I mean, they're... People of those days would be amazed at the average person's wardrobe today. And so for them to be throwing a garment on the ground was an act of worship. It was, it was a recognition that, that they believed that Jesus was someone really important, someone significant. In fact, they believed that he was the king. The other part of this, the reason we call it Palm Sunday, is that people cut palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road and, and waved them in the air. This was a political statement. Uh, we won't go into the the book of Maccabees right now, but if you ever read the book of Maccabees, the story there tells you about um, how palm branches are, are basically their way of, of waving a flag. And for them to be doing this for Jesus was signifying that they believed that he was their king, that he was coming uh, to, to take over, that he was coming to, to, to save them from the Roman oppression. And the next verse says, Jesus was in the center of the procession which is a beautiful thing to see. And all the people around him were shouting. What's really interesting about this is that throughout his, his ministry, most of the time, Jesus tried to downplay uh, who he was. You know, he would, he would heal somebody and then he would say, don't tell anyone that I did this. And the reason that he did that is because he said, now, now is not the time. The time has not yet come for me to, to reveal myself. But now by coming into Jerusalem on a donkey allowing all the people to, to, to lay their garments before him, to lay the palm branches before them, for him to be in the center of the procession and have all these people shouting his name, now was the time. Now was the time. He is riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. He is signifying, yes, I am the coming king. And what were the people shouting? Well, this translation I'm reading says, they were, they were shouting, praise God for the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Praise God in highest heaven. Uh, but the original word that they were shouting was Hosanna. And the direct translation of Hosanna is save now. The people were asking Jesus to save them. You know, they, they were thinking of a, a political king who was going to come and save them from the oppression of the Romans. Uh, they didn't understand that Jesus was coming to save them spiritually. But they were asking for him to save them. 
But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. The, the Pharisees did not recognize Jesus for who he was. But he replies, you know, up, up till now, uh, he, he may not have said anything at all. He, he, he wasn't looking for this kind of adulation. He was trying to, you know, he was saying, now's not the right time. But, but now, he says to the, the Pharisees, he said, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. Now is the time. Jesus is going to be worshipped right now. And if it's not the people who are going to do it, uh, then the stones would do it. And so, so Jesus basically is saying, let them worship. The entire city of Jerusalem was in, a rup, was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? They asked. And the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And so we read all about that, and it's, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty exciting. Or is it? I mean, in, in our Bibles today, this is called the triumphal entry. Do you know where the idea of a triumph comes from? Around the same time that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, you know, in, in the same era, Roman generals would be honored with what was called a triumph. Uh, if they had a, signif a significant enough victory over an enemy, the, the city of Rome would reward them with what was called a triumph. And what this was, was basically the biggest parade you could possibly imagine with the Roman general at the center of it. And he would come in and the entire city would be cheering him. It was an, an amazing recognition that this guy was significant. It would have been the highlight of that general's career. It would have been a, a huge day of celebra celebration. It would have been the biggest party that anyone would ever experience. Now you compare that to Jesus' triumphal entry. And I have to say, it doesn't sound to me, comparing the two, like Jesus has as good as a parade. We call this a triumphal entry, but it would really, it would pale in comparison to a Roman triumph. So how is it that the King of Kings has a parade that's not as good? as just a simple general in Rome. You have to ask yourself the question, is this really just the equivalent of a bunch of noisy kids on a walk? Well, the truth is that this was just an appetizer for the real triumphal entry. Once again, I've, I've gone through scripture and I've taken a number of passages and I put them together in a way that tells a story of what's gonna happen when Jesus comes back again. Starting with Acts 1, uh, Jesus has been talking to his disciples and, and he goes up to heaven and says, Jesus was taken up into a cloud while they were watching and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with the mighty blast of a trumpet. And they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy ones. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So we encourage each other with these words. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For, for you died to this life, and your real life is hidden 
with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So as great as this parade is that Jesus is, is, is a part of on Palm Sunday, as much, as much as it would have been amazing to, to see Jesus come into Jerusalem and be recognized as king, it is going to be nothing compared to the day that's going to come when Jesus comes again. And he's going to be surrounded, not, not by a, a simple Roman army, but he's going to be surrounded by the armies of heaven. All the angels in heaven are going to come down, and we're going to get to be a part of that. So what I want us to, to recognize this morning is that we need to set our sights on the realities of heaven. It is so easy, so easy to get distracted by what, by what seems like a big deal right now. I'm not trying to minimize what everyone's going through. I'm just saying that in light of eternity, we always need to remember that our whole lives are a blip on the timeline of eternity. Our whole lives, every moment you experience on earth, will be nothing compared to the, the length of time you're going to spend in eternity. So when the things of this world seem overwhelming, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Also remember, when things are amazing, when things are awesome, when you're having the best day that you will ever have, it is nothing compared to the realities of heaven. And so I'll leave you with this, Pine Ridge. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 23 to 24. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. Until we meet again, Pine Ridge, take care of each other.